humans of the cardboard welcome back to just nuts guys tonight we need to talk about infernoids it's it's an archetype that i always thought was really interesting but i never had like a specific you know uh, mag magnetism towards it but now I, I really think it's interesting because not only is the set confirmed to get its own specific archetypal support in terminal world this new ocg set that's coming out in a month and a half which means we could start seeing reveals as early as next week um, but also some of these new archetypes that have come out and have like very specific synergy with Infernoids that we're going to talk about today. I want to talk about really where this deck is at at this point with like the Diabell Star and Evil Eye stuff, as well as like where they've been, where the cards they already have, and where I think that leaves them for this support. How many cards I think they should get, how many cards they're going to wish to get, um, and the types of cards that I think that they're going to end up needing. Um, to kind of pull them together and get them back into a competitive mindset. That'd be really, really cool. Because this, this archetype is very unique, and that's one thing I like about it. Even if you're not specifically drawn to it, you have to recognize this archetype is very unique and cool uh, in its own right. So, let's start off by going through the Inferno cards that we know and love, um, and just sum up this archetype in a, in a quick sense. Um, the one main monster the deck always runs through is Decatron. This card is actually insane. Uh, he's a level 1 tuner. Uh, he's a level fire fiend level one tuner that'll come up later on on normal or special he sends an infernoid monster from deck to grave increases his level by the level of that monster and then he copies its name and original and his monster effects so uh that's that's permanent by the way it's not even like until the end of the turn so he then just keeps that monster's effects until he's removed from the field or negated uh very very strong card one low-key thing that we'll mention also later on not once per turn at all at all all which is actually crazy so if you're able to reborn him or get him back on the field somehow he just fires over and over again so hand traps on him while he feels like he might be the best hand trap target it actually feels pretty bad if they're able to just kind of like rotate around and get him back out again so it's brutal but really really central card to this deck then you have all these guys so they have uh they have a monster for every level one through ten um i think one through eight are pretty similar um they all have the exact same like first and like last effect more or less the first effect says they can't be normal summoned or set they must be special summoned from hand by banishing an infernoid monster from hand or grave while the total levels and ranks of all monsters on your field are eight or less Weird stipulation, but I think with links going on in the game now, that's very easy to bypass because you can just summon monsters that don't have levels at all. So that's not like a huge thing, but that's normally their summoning condition. Decatron's the only normal summonable monster in the deck. Uh, and the last effect is a quick effect during the opponent's turn where they contribute any monster you control to target a card on in your opponent's graveyard and banish it. It's a pretty good, they're just all walking DD crows. And that's pretty strong and then they have some like effect on the field in the middle um the small ones tend to have like decent removal effects like pure mice just like sh uh, shuffles a set card antra can uh, target a phase of card and bounce it pretty good there harmadic just targets a monster destroys it patrulia targets a spell or trap destroys it honestly just pretty good removal effects uh the middle ones are actually like to me like the worst ones their stats get a little bit better but their on field effects are just worse you have piati shijet uh site samas and a tondel most of these have just like battle phase relevant effects that aren't even that good they're fine you only really play them if you like need their specific level for a certain line uh that you want to do sometimes so that's mostly it and then you have the boss monsters uh deviati and anunku they're kind of like opposites of each other because deviati says uh, when he's special summoned you can destroy all spells and traps on the field except for your void cards and once per turn, when another monster effect is activated, you contribute a monster, negate it, and banish it. So, uh, monster negate, but also wipe spell and traps on summon. Pretty powerful card. Same thing for Anunku, but just literally swapped, right? Destroys all monsters when he's summoned, and then he's a spell and trap negate. They're very good. Those are some of the best boss monsters to be able to dump off of Decatron, because copying these effects is actually quite strong. And... Um, yeah, they, they give you like versatility and being able to go for one or the other depending on the matchup you're in, for sure. Uh, then you get to the Voids. Imagination is your fusion spell. This helps you get out your, your fusion guy we'll talk about at the end. Vanishment is honestly pretty crazy because it discards a card to add a Void spell or trap from deck to hand. Um, it does like you into Infernoids to the end of the turn, but still, it's, it's still pretty worth it because it's only for the rest of the turn too, so you could do other stuff beforehand. 
Um, and it has like a cool battle phase effect as well. That's that's nice. Void Apocalypse is a new card. We actually haven't seen this card see play since the deck has lost its playability. It could come up. I'm still not convinced it's like amazing in the deck. It's a continuous. You can discard a card to just foolish any fiend in the game. So maybe if you play like other engines, there could be really good fiends to send. But Infernoids, like just sending one isn't good enough. It feels like you need to do more. Um, it's just okay for right now. Um, it does another thing, but it requires your opponent to have a special summon monster uh, on the field from the extra deck. So it's just okay. Uh, Void Seer. This card's kind of interesting. I don't think this card has really seen a ton of play in this deck over the years, but I think in modern day it becomes a little more interesting. It's essentially just Eagle Booster, uh, but for, for them, it just may, targets a, an Infernoid you control and makes it unaffected by card effects, uh, opponent's card effects this turn. And then it's just a Baylinx engraved later on. It's it's actually a pretty good card that could make your deck a little more durable than it's been before, especially if people still want to play it going second. Uh, then you have Feast, the last main deck card. Uh, pretty insane. It sends a Void Spell or Trap from your hand or face a field of the grave to special summon up to three Inferno monsters from your deck whose total levels equal eight, ignoring their summoning conditions. Um, that's really good because you're always almost at least summoning uh, Decatron, which means you're at least getting like the effects of a Deviati or an Anunku live for a monster negate or a spell and trap negate. And then you usually end up summoning like two or three other ones that uh, would have those DD Crow effects. So you're getting like bare minimum Decatron um, while also getting other ones. Also, you can summon multiple Decatrons off of this if you want. So you could send in an Anunku and a Deviati and get both of those live. This card's pretty strong, for sure. This is one of the strongest cards in the deck, no, no doubt about it. And the last one here is Tierra. Uh, it's a pretty powerful boss monster that, like, when it's summoned, uh, normally the main effect you really care about is uh, each player sends the top three cards, or sends three cards from their extra to the graveyard. So you would play some stuff like Elder Entity Intis, and maybe play Garou or a draw cards, and you know what I mean? You just play, like, generic good extra monsters that are good to send. Um, other than that, it's really big, but that's mainly what you're doing with it. So it is, like, a pretty powerful power play card to help you push into your opponent. That's mainly why you play it. Um, so yeah, those are all the actual Inferno cards. Moving into the rest of the stuff, the Sinful Spoils ended. Dia Star Engine makes this deck so, so, so much better because it, it technically gives you up to seven, actually technically up to nine starters that just get you an e telly for Decatron, essentially, because Snake Eye just lets you send any face-up card you control the grave to just special summon a level one fire from hand or deck, so just summon Decatron, boom. No normal summon, just e telly out of Decatron get him going when he gets going your deck gets going it's very very good um and he's not once per turn either so even if you hard open one you could use the one you summon off of this to bait in a gate and then just normal summon the second one that one resolves and he's off to the races it's so very very powerful um so yeah this engine is definitely going to see play in this deck i have no doubts about that for sure um it's very scary they also have other monsters that have really good synergy. Excel is a monster for um, for Snake Eye. Wait, well, this card's normal or special. You can add a level one fire from deck to hand, so that just even adds Decatron or even the other level one. Um, can't remember his name, but uh, like, so if you need an extender Infernoid, you can just get him. Snake Eyes have their own extenders, so you can get him. There's actually some really good utility to playing this guy as well. Um, especially since Decatron's really early normal, so you could definitely afford to play one or two of this guy alongside of him and still not be bricking up too much. Um, Orc is another really interesting card, specifically just because Decatron's not once per turn. When this guy's summoned, he just reborns a level one fire. So just reborn, if your opponent imperm Decatron to start, you get a line into Orc, then Orc summons back the Decatron, boom, Decatron fires, you are back into the, you know, the driver's seat, you're cooking. Um, and there's other synergies too. Uh, there really are. Um, the other extender for Snake Eyes also has cool synergy. The field spell, the boss monster. They have cool stuff. And I think it's also important to note that I'm expecting them to get even more support, even Diabell Star potentially as well, um, in the next core set after Phantom Nightmare anyway. So the world is kind of our oyster at this point. There's honestly like so much in the air. Um, for Snake Eye, Snake Eye can only only get better from here. Diabell Star can only get better from here, and that just it, de facto could come back to um, Inferno to make them better too, because they're definitely vibing with this synergy. And the last uh, main deck card that I think makes sense here is Layer of Darkness. Um, 
all of those DD Crow effects, like generic, and even the negation from Deviati and uh, Anunku, say generically, tribute one monster. Not a monster you control, not anything weird, it just says one monster. So any of those effects with Layer of Darkness on the field, just tribute your opponent's monster instead. I mean, even the DD Crows become like insane. Those are, like a DD Crow is just okay, right? Especially if you have to give up a body on, on the field to use it. But if one, we don't have to give up the body, and two, we're getting we're having like a very strong piece of removal from our opponent's field to then DD Crow something, that is such a strong interaction. Uh, trust me on that. That is like so, so strong. So I think this card's going to have consideration in the deck as well because I think it's not even bad going first, but obviously it's very, very strong going second. Um, definitely a card to keep an eye on. And the last one is Muckraker. Just because it's, it's we just got a generic link too that reborns any fiend, Decatron is not once per turn. We've already talked about it like multiple times in the deck about how like this new support and all these cards like surrounding the deck just allow you to summon Decatron multiple, multiple times to bypass any types of interruption. So Muckraker honestly could be huge in the deck because even even just summoning Decatron, it, it, normal summoning it, and it gets imperm, you're like, hmm, do I have any way to put a body on the field? Yes. Okay, cool. Let me summon that. Uh, and then I'll just make Muckraker, discard a card, reborn Decatron, and then Decatron resolves and boom. Like, you're just in there. So, it's honestly really, really good. <laughs> um, plus, this card then protects Decatron from being destroyed. So, if they try to just walk over him because he still tight, stays tiny stat-wise, he also protects it from that. So, I think this card's amazing for the deck, but um, that's just me. Um, so, yeah. I think we're in a really cool place. I think um, the deck is really looking nice. The one thing I, I never really loved about Infernoid is it definitely always felt kind of bricky. All these guys who can't be normal summoner set, if you don't find Decatron in the deck, it doesn't really feel like the deck can play. Luckily, we're getting a ton of new ways that we're going to much more consistently find Decatron. And also the Snake Eyes can definitely carry the load of the deck at times. Like, they can do their own plays. So, like, there are other ways where, you know, we don't have to lean on the Infernoids, but I would like an additional way or two to like kind of unbrick Infernoids. I don't know if it'd be a starter in the form of like a new spell that kind of helps you get like a send and a search. So that way you're like already setting up the ability to summon one of the extenders like for free or something. Um, I don't know if it's another normal summonable Infernoid. Uh, I'd also love an Infernoid that has like an on-field kind of like extension, uh, kind of like extension effect to kind of like get stuff set up in grave and stuff that way. Um, if you have like multiple Decatron fires, you can like use the first one on that guy to kind of get like stuff set up, get stuff sent to grave, um, get even more sent to grave, get like something else on field and uh, whatever the effect is. And then with the second one, that's when you get send your like your Deviati or your Nunku and you actually start setting up like negations and interruptions and stuff. I think there's definitely a world where that could be nice as well. Um, and maybe even extra monster. I mean, the deck, um, you know, the deck only has the fusion, but they are, their main guy is a tuner, but no synchros. Maybe it's a link, maybe it's a link two. I could easily see a link two coming up here for sure. I'm very curious. I think there's a lot of ways they could go about it, but I think the biggest thing to me is going to have to be clamping down on that consistency. We just don't want to lose games because we're drawing the the just weird middle ranged uh, infernoids and not decatron or anything so i think that's definitely a huge thing plus drawing like deviati and anunku is like really annoying those cards are pretty bad bricks so you got to keep an eye on those as well but yeah that's that's mostly what we're looking at um deck's really cool i'm really excited for what whatever konami brings um we also don't even know how many cards it's going to be so I think this card's. I think this deck's already close enough because of all the other stuff going around that are actually like not even on, not even like directly supporting them, but indirectly supporting them. They don't need much. One or two cards, if they were like the right cards and like really good, I think could go a long way in this deck. But like, I don't know. This is an entire set where it looks like the only new cards are for these four archetypes. Like, are they really only going to make like eight new cards, two for each archetype? Like. That almost just doesn't feel right. Like, eight new cards and then 135 reprints? Like, what kind of set is this? Um, so, I, I'm thinking we're getting somewhere between, like, three and five. I think that's, like, a more reasonable range to expect here. Um, in which case, they could do a ton. I mean, if they make five cards, like, you can almost make a meta archetype these days with five cards. I mean, look at Dia Bellstar. Like, it's being splashed in everything, and you usually only play, like, three different cards in that engine. So, yeah, um... 
there's a lot going on. I, hopefully, Konami does a good job. I, I think this is a good video, just kind of summing up where they're at and, and what we're hoping for. If you're an Infernoid fan and you played the deck more than me, I've actually never actually played the deck. I played against it a couple times, um, but I'd love to hear your thoughts if you're if you are someone who actually actively plays the deck. What you would actively want to see, especially if you want to get into like the nitty gritty of like specific plays and, and how it like comes up um, more specific uh, scenario wise. I'd love to hear that down below so let me know in the comments on that um but i'm out here for tonight thank you so much for watching as always guys subscribe to the channel for more stuff from me down the line i think i'm gonna make another video like this soon about the ice barrier stuff because they've gotten actually a lot of support recently as well in the last couple of years so i actually do think they have a base at least especially if this wave is really strong and uh who knows maybe ice barriers could be the next best rogue deck i, I don't know there's a world where that's true but we'll see uh, but I'm out of here for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.